everyone, and welcome to another candidate interview with Chill TV's continuing coverage of the BC 2020 election presented by Simpson Notaries. Today, I'm welcoming Tim Cooper, who's running for the Green Party in the riding of Chilliwack. Welcome, Mr. Cooper. Maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, what possessed you to put your name forward to run in this provincial election. Well, thank you very much, Clint. Um, What's been driving me for many years has been a memory of what my high school physics teacher told the class back in 1972. Uh, don't do the math. Um, and um, he basically apologized to the class and said, we've left you with two major problems, the threat of global nuclear war and the threat of what was then called the greenhouse effect. And all my life that's been buzzing around in my back, back in my mind thinking, yeah, that's kind of a worry. Um, about 17 years ago, I decided it's time to do something about climate change, do what little I can. And what can I do? Well, my first thought was, well, I'm a teacher, because I actually teach physics at the University of the Fraser Valley. Maybe I can teach. So I've given 180 presentations on climate change around the valley. If anybody would like me to give a presentation to them, just, just get a hold of me through Chill TV. That would work very well. Um, and... Those presentations have done nothing to ease my fears, so I've really been working hard for 17 years researching climate change, uh, solutions to it and effects of it. Um, we've had uh, five major extinction events in the past, and four of those were caused by carbon dioxide. I don't want to see my kids caught up in the, fifth, in the sixth extinction. So that's really been driving me. As far as why I went into the Greens, I never had an interest in running for politics. But three weeks ago, one of the lovable old curmudgeons of the Green Party came to me and said, we need a candidate, would you do it? And after saying no initially, um, he asked again a bit later and I said, okay, fine, I will do it. So um, I've been running for election and learning how to get elected for three weeks and no more than that, while holding down a full-time job which is meaning that I'm not extremely prepared. So if I come across with some, huh, I don't know, that'll be why. So I'm here really to run for the Greens because the Green Party platform is the one that's closest to my values. And I think they're the ones who will take more seriously the threat of climate change to our kids than any of the others. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, Green Party positions on certain issues. We're coming through now, or I would say we're kind of midpoint in a global pandemic, which has uh, impacted the world very significantly. And British Columbia has uh, been a part of that, although it's, it has to be said that we've done a pretty good job in managing the pandemic. But it's impacted our economy in a significant way. And as we move through and we start talking about recovery, where's the Green Party stand with respect to our provincial recovery? What's their plan? And which of the plans that are being put forward might they support if they end up in the same position that they're in today, controlling the balance of power in the legislature? Well, I think if the Greens do control the balance of power, they don't have to accept any plan completely. They can make, suggest modification to it and there'll be compromise that goes on. Um, the, one of the things that I have um, realized is that most plans involve spending money. The Green Party's um, central theme is make it better for the kids, whether that's environmentally better, but it's also balancing budget, not leaving the kids with large debts. However, there comes a time when you have to release that policy, say, OK, no, that's not going to work now. We need to spend money that we don't have. That means borrowing money and build, 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 do things that will stimulate the economy. I think all of the plans do that. It's just that we're uh, tackling it in different ways. One way would be to cut taxes, um, and that's okay, it works. It does put more money into people's hands. Generally speaking, if you put hand, money into the hands of poor people, they'll spend it and keep the economy going. If you put it into the hands of richer people, they'll save it, and that doesn't really do so much. It just sits there. So um, the Green Party is not really talking significantly about tax cuts, but you do need money to actually implement various, various plans. Um, I think we're going to talk specifically, Clint, is that right, about specifics like transportation, building infrastructure yes, later. Yeah. So yeah, um, the one thing which I like about the Green Party, though, is that we have a big drain right now on our financial resources here in BC and across Canada. Uh, the fossil fuel industry has built Canada. It's a fantastic industry, we're all richer because of it, and we should thank them for that. But times have changed. We are now in a situation where we can move our cars, we can heat our homes, generate electricity, 
all cheaper without using fossil fuels than with using fossil fuels. But our politicians have not given up the old ways of doing things. In BC, when the Liberals started fracking up in the northern part of the province, and we started talking about LNG, it was done through giving money to the industry. And when the NDP took over, I rejoiced. I thought, oh, that's the end of that. But no, it's got worse. Uh, the NDP is subsidizing the fossil fuel industry to the tune of about a billion dollars a year. The Green Party would end that completely, almost immediately. That's one of the big firm policies. And not only is that good because it's going to clean up the air and help us introduce clean energy, but also uh, with a, million, a billion dollars, you can do things. You can build hospitals, you can build roads, you can stimulate the economy. We don't have to give it to the foreign-owned LNG companies and uh, well, other fossil fuel industries. So how, do you, uh, how would the Green Party see substituting the revenues that come from the fossil fuel industry in the form of royalties mm -hmm. and taxes? Where do those revenues get made up if you, uh, mm -hmm. if you move away from that industry? Yeah, looking at the industry as a whole, there's massive subsidies that go in and there's revenues that come out, but the revenues are much smaller than the, the, than the subsidies. So at the present time, I mean, there are revenues, but they're offset by credits that the industry has. So we haven't really collected much in the way of revenues from the fossil fuel industry. So what's going to happen if we continue on the way we're doing is that the fossil fuel industry will just become a net sink of taxpayers' dollars, not so, a net source. So what kind of investments in, we've, we talked a little bit about transportation, uh, what kind of investments would the Green Party see in transportation infrastructure, which moves goods and services around the province, which moves mm -hmm. people uh, around the province, where should those investments be made according to the Green Party? Okay, uh, well for transportation, uh, the Green Party is a big fan of um, uh, what I would call pollution-free transportation. And here in the Valley in particular, the Green Party, it hasn't focused on Chilliwack that much, to be honest. In fact, I was told when I ran, don't even consider winning, <laughs> which I think was a little bit de defeatist. But they look at the riding and they say, no, that's not one of our strongholds. So, the, um, the needs of the valley have not been a front and foremost within the Green Party. However, if I can get a good showing in this election, I think we can change that. But we can deduce what the Green Party would say based on their general principles. Um, one of the most energy efficient and pollution free systems of transportation is steel wheel on steel rail, i.e. trains. And there's a fantastic railway, the interurban runs from Chilliwack all the way through to uh, New West if we have to go that far, although with a SkyTrain extension to Langley, we could probably stop the line at Langley. Um, I, the, I would be lobbying my colleagues in the Green Party, and I think very easily find support for reopening that railway to passenger traffic. Moreover, uh, much like on a European model, when you come to the end of the railway, it's possible to extend it all the way downtown as a tram through the streets as a tram going off to the U of A campus. Um, sorry, <laughs> I should get that one right. <laughs> going <laughs> I think going it's off U to the U of A, but U of A is a great University, school. <laughs> University of the Fraser Valley. Yeah, yeah, am I stressed out or what? University of the Fraser Valley campus here in Chilliwack, but also have a spur go up in Abbotsford and many other places where you can uh, find a large concentration of people. That's the sort of program the Greens would really get behind very quickly. Um, um, for other transportations, um, I drove here an electric car, not just to show off, but also because I'm cheap. <laughs> to buy and run an electric car is now cheaper than to buy a gasoline car. That statement was not true two years ago, but it's dramatic the effect it's going to have. To speed up the transition, because electric cars give us much cleaner air as well as using um, less energy than gasoline cars. To speed up the transition, the Green Party is very keen on getting charging infrastructure out there. The place to put it um, is in malls, supermarkets, places where people go. A lot of people live in condominiums. They can't charge their car while they're at home. But they do go shopping for food. They do go shopping for other things. Workplaces as well. If you can have a uh, plug-in place at your workplace, you go to work, you plug in. In the evening when you come home, your car's fully charged. So whilst we transition to, from gasoline vehicles to electric vehicles and simply driven by the price, that's all you need, uh, we can speed it up by adding that infrastructure. 
Well, thanks uh, for joining us today. Uh, Tim, uh, you probably parked beside my electric vehicle mm -hmm. and enjoying the benefits of, of that uh, very much. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, providing more interviews uh, throughout this election season, so please stay tuned to Chill TV and be sure to mark your calendar for Chill TV's October 24th BC 2020 election night coverage presented by Simpson Notaries, starting at 7.30 p.m., about 30 minutes before the polls close. I'm going to be joined that evening by Bud Mercer and Don Lane and a number of guests that I think you'll find very interesting as we follow the election results. So thank you so much for tuning in to this session of Chill TV's BC election coverage.